Well, one of the things that he actually says, this is on a separate article that I don't cite there. I, I cite it in my book, Zionism in the Black Church, in an article entitled, He Chose to Switch Then Fight. There's a little comment that he made. And you'll see the thing there that the, this particular quote isn't on there, but that's what it looks like. Uh, if you go on my Twitter feed, you'll see that. It's also on, our, it's on the uh, Ipsy's Facebook page. You can click on it. You can actually look at the actual article. And he actually said, I'll just leave this in 1975. Again, he's back. He's red pilled and everything like that. The man's going a different direction. And this is the quote that I have on my on my tweet there uh, from the other day. 1975, former Black Panther turned Zionist Eldridge Cleaver said that in the event of increasing conflicting U.S. Israel interests in the Middle East, the U.S. government was, quote, capable of sacrificing Israel, end quote. Cleaver was referring specifically to Arab states using, quote, oil as a weapon, end quote. Of course, the Islamic Republic of Iran, to which the U.S. government is inexplicably catering now, and we have all those receipts, ladies and gentlemen, the sanctions relief, the whole nuclear weapons capability, that whole thing, right? And for the, again, for those of you who love the Biden administration and you, you know, died the wool Democrat and it hurts your feelings of somebody, whatever, I'm, that's what's going on, right? All the receipts. It would not materialize until 1979, four years after Cleaver had come back and, and begun to advocate for Israel and all those things. The more I see the U.S. support Iranian hegemony, which is controlled there in the region, the more I reflect on Kieber's words, mainly the sacrificing Israel part. They go on to say black American civil rights leaders, Dr. King, Bayard Rustin, uh, Elgis Cleaver, A. Philip Randolph, Roy Wilkins, who was the head of the NAACP during the whole Zionism is racism and on and on. They seem the most prescient the most prophetic regarding Israel's ultimate relationship with the West. What do I mean? I'm not saying something that's just negative and being doom and gloom. Those black leaders not only defended Israel, not only stood with Israel, but were also willing, right, to speak truth to power to the United Nations if they felt that uh, U.S. policy needed to be checked out or whatever like that, right? They, they're, they're on record, right? Again, not hating America, right? These Americans, like, again, love our nation. Enough to speak truth to power to it, right? So when Eldridge Cleaver was surmising that based on what he was seeing on a geopolitical stage, what he was saying was that American interests in the region could go to the point where they side more with Israel's enemies than Israel for its own interest, right? God forbid, but right, we fast forward to 2024 and you watch the type of capitulation to Iran. Iran and its proxies are attacking U.S. soldiers there through the Houthis and others, right? And the media doesn't even really talk about it, right? It's as if it's not even happening. It's as if the Biden administration so doesn't want to rile the mullahs, right? That it's willing for Iran to get away with almost anything, right? including the proxies that are Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, right? Israel is surrounded by what my friend Eric Stackelbeck calls a ring of fire, right? And every one of those terrorist groups is either funded by or connected to in some way the Islamic Republic of Iran. Not the people of Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran, greatly enhanced and empowered by the United States government, right? That just is what it is. Right? That sounds anti-American, right? So again, without, this is not the kiddie pool, this is the deep end, right? We're going to have to be real, right? That's what's actually happening. So while that's happening, when Elders Cleaver, almost what, what, 50 years ago, was looking at the relationship between Israel, the United States, and the United States and the Arab countries, and particularly oil producing nations, he was saying that he could foresee the United States throwing money on the bus for access to oil energy, right? So again, fast forward to now, that's not so much what's happening, but it would appear that the US administration has picked its choice for who rules in the region. And that seems to be Islamic Republic of Iran. <laughs>